TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The United States and France push forward a proposal for 21 days cessation of hostilities for Lebanon, urging both Israel and Lebanon, rather than Hezbollah, to accept their bid. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu rebuffs reports of supposedly accepting a ceasefire, pledging Israel will not relent in pursuit of its war objectives for either Hamas in Gaza or Hezbollah in Lebanon. IDF Chief of General Staff Lt. Gen. Hiltzia Levy instructs Northern Command to maintain peak preparedness for a ground maneuver into Lebanon. Israel will not relent from pursuing its declared war objectives for Gaza and northern Israel, including the return of Israel's northern residents safely to their homes, rescue the 101 hostages from Hamas captivity, and eradicate the Islamist Hamas's military and governing capabilities in the Gaza Strip. Alongside the Lebanese Front, IDF Chief of General Staff Lt. Gen. Hiltzia Levy met with field commanders and troops of the 98th Division, during the course of which he highlighted Israel's resolve to end the threat of the Iranian proxy Hezbollah. You hear the jets overhead. We have been striking Hezbollah all day. This is both to prepare the ground for your possible entry and to continue degrading Hezbollah. Today, Hezbollah expanded its range of fire, and later today, they will receive a very strong response. Prepare yourselves. The IDF's top commander went on to assert that the only way to ensure this safe return of Israel's northern residents to their homes includes a ground maneuver. We continue to attack and we continue to hit them everywhere. The goal is very clear, to safely return the residents of the north. To achieve that, we are preparing the process of a maneuver, which means your military boots, your maneuvering boots, will enter enemy territory, enter villages that Hezbollah has prepared as large military outposts, with underground infrastructure, staging points, and launch pads into our territory and carry out attacks on Israeli civilians. Your entry into those areas with force, your encounter with Hezbollah operatives, will show them what it means to face a professional, highly skilled, and battle-experienced force. You are coming in much stronger and far more experienced than they are. You will go in, destroy the enemy there, and decisively destroy their infrastructure. These are the things that will allow us to safely return the residents of the north afterward. Since dawn, the Israeli Air Force struck hundreds of Hezbollah terror targets throughout southern Lebanon, including along the Lebanese border with Syria. The IDF spokesperson's unit said in a statement that fighter jets struck infrastructure along the Syria-Lebanon border used by Hezbollah to transfer weapons from Syria to Hezbollah in Lebanon, which the terrorist organization used against Israeli civilians. It continued by stressing that the IDF will continue to strike and act against the Hezbollah terrorist organization's attempts to arm itself and transfer weapons into Lebanon from Syrian territory, while further underscoring its unyielding resolve to operate to dismantle and degrade Hezbollah's capabilities and terrorist infrastructure. In contrast, Hezbollah launched a number of barrages of rockets and mortar shells toward northern Israel, including toward the towns of Margaliot and Kiryat Shmona. Thankfully, no injuries or damage were reported. Meanwhile, at the United Nations headquarters in New York, Lebanese Prime Minister Najim Kati urged members of the Council to do everything in their power to stop Israel, while conveniently stopping short from even mentioning Hezbollah's instigated war of aggression that included the firing of thousands of projectiles from Lebanese territory against predominantly northern Israel. 
Lebanon today is victim to an enemy that is using electronic, cyber, sea and air attacks against us that could turn into a ground attack and set the stage for an all-out regional war. I hope to return to my country armed with you explicit stance calling for the cessation of this aggression out of respect for the sovereignty and safety of my country. What we are seeing today is an unprecedented escalation resorting to new tools and methods, especially cyber and electronic tools, to harm our people. The aggressor is claiming that they are only targeting combatants and weapons, but I assure you that the hospitals of Lebanon are full of injured civilians, among them tens of women and children. In response, French Foreign Minister Jean-Noël Baron announced that Paris and Washington have proposed an immediate 21-day cessation of hostilities that would allow for negotiations to try and avert an all-out escalation. A diplomatic solution is indeed possible. In recent days, we've worked with our American partners on a temporary ceasefire platform of 21 days to allow for negotiations. This platform will be made public very soon and we are counting on both parties to accept it without delay in order to protect civilian populations and allow for diplomatic negotiations to begin. The statement by the French top diplomat was made after U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, during a meeting with his counterparts from the Gulf Cooperation Council plus Egypt, voiced the Biden administration's determination to de-escalate the situation in Lebanon via diplomatic means, believing it remains possible, regardless of Hezbollah's refusal to comply after over 11 months of separate attempts by both the United States and France to yield results. We meet at a time of high tension, risk of escalation in the region is acute, and I know that we are all very much focused on that. Um, the best answer is diplomacy, and our coordinated efforts are vital to preventing further escalation and to paving the path to greater peace and stability. With regard to Lebanon, we've been working tirelessly with partners to avoid a full-blown war and to move to a diplomatic process that would allow Israelis and Lebanese alike to go back to their homes. On Gaza, we are grateful to GCC partners, especially to our friends from Qatar uh, and, uh, and Egypt, for tireless efforts to get to a ceasefire, uh, one that would bring the hostages home, bring immediate relief to uh, the people of Gaza, and create an opportunity for more enduring peace and stability. It is important to know that the extensive efforts of the United States to avert a full-scale conflagration between Israel and the Iranian proxy Hezbollah comes after the Ayatollah regime asserted that it could not remain indifferent in the event of an all-out escalation in Lebanon. The Israeli leaders must understand that their crimes will not go unpunished. The path to re-escalation is clear. Israel must immediately stop its attacks on Gaza and Lebanon. Without the ceasefire in Gaza, there would be no guarantee of peace in the region. The Security Council must act now to halt, to halt Israel's war and enforce an immediate ceasefire and by that to save innocent lives. If not, the region risks full-scale conflict, and history will hold Israel's enablers, especially the United States, responsible. Iran has already shown tremendous patience and restraint from the for the sake of regional peace and stability. Iran firmly upholds its inherent right to defend its vital interests. And finally, Iran will not remain indifferent in case of a full-scale war in Lebanon. We stand with the people of Lebanon with all means. Meanwhile, amid reports in Israel claiming that Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu had agreed to negotiate a diplomatic solution, including the American-French proposed cessation of hostilities, the Israeli Premier's office released a statement in which it emphasized, quote, the news about a ceasefire is incorrect. This is an American-French proposal to which the Prime Minister did not even respond. 
The news about the so-called directive to moderate the fighting in the north is also the opposite from the truth. The Prime Minister instructed the IDF to continue the fighting with full force and according to the plans presented to him. Moreover, the fighting in Gaza will continue until all the goals of the war are achieved. Meanwhile, prior to his travel to the United Nations General Assembly in New York earlier today, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu published a film statement in which he reiterated his pledge to return Israel's northern residents back to their communities. I cannot detail everything we are doing, but I can tell you one thing. We are determined to return our residents in the north safely to their homes. We are inflicting blows on Hezbollah that he did not imagine. We do it with power. We do it with guile. I promise you one thing, we will not rest until they come home. It is important to know that Prime Minister B. Minetonyao, together with his wife Sarah, landed in New York City today, where the Israeli Prime Minister is scheduled to deliver his annual speech to the United Nations General Assembly tomorrow afternoon. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I would like to encourage you, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Separately, if you're blessed by our productions, which are exclusively donation-based, please consider supporting our program with a donation. You can do so via our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Mevorach, and God willing, we will see you during our next update. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.